What's up guys? Welcome back to Hashtag Ask BRP. We're on to episode number 31. I just pulled in the parking lot this morning. A couple people wanted to um, ask some questions for the show, so I figured I'd just pop it out of the way now. So without further ado, here we go. The first question is, Seth, what is the status of the PayPal dispute? <sighs> well, my account is still limited. Um, they are allowing me, thank God, to withdraw money from PayPal. Like if I sell something and get paid for it, at least they're letting me keep the money for it. Um, it's still limited. They still are asking like super, super intrusive questions. They want copies of, of like my pawnbroker's license and this license and that license and why we're taking payments and explaining what different sales are for. And it's just like, it's super, super intrusive. However, um, they did explain to me that it's not them that's requiring it. It's actually the government is requiring them um, to ask a lot of different businesses that they have a lot of these questions. So I don't think there's anything they can do about it. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to have to get through it. And uh, hopefully sometime soon they'll unlimit the account. So that's the status. The second question is, um, Seth, why do you not buy Prada or Gucci bags, but you buy Louis Vuitton and Chanel bags? Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. Um, Louis Vuitton and Chanel hold the value, especially in the pre-owned market, way, way better than Prada or Gucci. Yes, there are some Prada bags, some Gucci bags that sell well. Um, the uh, the Prada Safiano is, is a decent seller. We have a couple of those in stock right now. The Gucci Soho, like the new, it's... Uh, it's like a hobo style shoulder with a chain. That, if we got one in that was in really nice condition, I would take a chance on. But the other stuff from those companies just doesn't hold its value. You can search on eBay, Gucci bag, Prada bag, you'll see um, the prices are so low, uh, especially compared to the retail, that it's just not worth it for us to buy them because we have to pay, people pay like a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars for a bag and I offer them fifty bucks a hundred bucks so it's you know rarely would they ever actually sell it and even when I buy it it's just too hard for me to sell they there's so much product out there that I can't get rid of it plus Prada and Gucci will send bags that they can't sell in the store to outlet stores and when that happens say they're charging two thousand dollars for a bag retail they send it to the outlet store now it's eleven hundred so already the, the they lowered their own price so if the bag is pre-owned first it was two thousand now it's eleven hundred so pre-owned it's what half of that six fifty so a bag that you may paid two grand for a couple years ago is now uh at the outlet store for eleven hundred you can't expect to get any real money for it, and it just diminishes the brand. Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Hermes never go on sale. They don't send things to outlet stores ever. They don't care if they don't sell the bag. They'll just put it back and maybe recycle it or reuse it, but they don't want their stuff on sale. And in the long run, it works because they're a Louis Vuitton Neverfull that retails for twelve sixty. I can sell pre-owned for over a thousand dollars. Why? Because people like to save a couple hundred bucks, but just goes to show how how well those two brands, and if you include Hermes, those three brands hold their value, and uh, it doesn't even compare. Prada and Gucci are, are way below, even though when you, you think about them, they're kind of like in the same realm, Prada, Gucci, Louis, Chanel, but they're not. Louis, Chanel, Hermes are the top three. A lot of commotion going on in my parking lot. Um, so the final question is, what is the coolest item I have in the store at the moment? It's actually a good question. Um, one of the coolest items I have that's not really part of the items that I normally take is a Beatles gold album, um, which is really, really cool. Obviously, there's not too many of those out there. Um, I actually I found out that they give gold records also to individual songs. So they had, a, they had so many hits and so many gold records for songs but they only had a certain amount of albums. I think they had maybe 20 albums that they made and uh, not all of them went gold, I think. Maybe they did, but even if they all did, there's like 20 gold albums for actual albums and we have one in our store for um, the album, It's Something New. And, uh, and that's a really cool piece. Actually, the gentleman who brought it to me bought it at Sotheby's, um, sold it to us and uh, I actually sent it for review at Sotheby's and they, and they put a pretty high estimate on it, so I was very happy. But that is a very cool item.
but as far as like normal items that I take, jewelry, watches, or handbags, um, right now we have a, uh, a Rolex Platinum Masterpiece that has a retail price of like $96,000, close to $100,000. That is a very, very cool item. Um, something you're not going to see in a lot of pawn shops. And we have a lot of watches and things like that. It's it, The cool thing about my store is that we don't do a lot of out of the ordinary. So I don't get like a lot of weird things. I don't get like a horse or a weird something. Uh, we're very narrow. We stick to jewelry, watches, and handbags. Um, but having watches valued at that high is obviously very cool. Um, and the Beatles record for sure. Well, that's it, guys. That's uh, getting a little busy in my, par my uh, in my parking lot, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run in. Um, but that was episode number 31. Please remember, get on Instagram, follow us at Boca Raton Pawn. Check my Snapchat out; it's very funny. Um, our username is BRP Luxury, and uh, like us on Facebook, of course. And we'll see you uh, in a couple days.